Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. It depends where you are. I am Bernard Gunn and I am very pleased to present to you for the first time, on behalf of IRPA, a new common guidance, Enhancing Radiation Safety Culture in Healthcare. This initiative was a, a collaborative effort by, in alphabetical order, IAA, IOMP, IRPA, and WHO. It was for capturing the opinion of all stakeholders with a view to developing a framework uh, for the establishment and maintenance of a radiation protection culture as part of a safety culture program. IRPA has recognized the importance of establishing a sound radiation protection culture during IRPA 12 in 2008. After the Congress, IRPA launched a specific initiative on this item, and the first IRPA Guiding Principles on Radiation Protection Culture was published in 2014. It was a common document uh, from the nuclear industry to the medical sectors uh, about culture from the perspective of professionals geared towards professionals. The purpose was to capture the opinion and standpoint of radiation protection professionals on what constitutes a strong radiation protection culture. In the same period, IAEA and WHO jointly uh, publish the Bone Call for Action, which explicitly calls in Action 8 for strengthening radiation safety culture in healthcare. The final version of the international BSS, sponsored by eight international organizations, was also published, and it refers to promote and maintain safety culture. That's why the idea of joining efforts to develop a specific document on radiation safety culture in healthcare was discussed and proposed in two IRPA regional congresses. The first one was uh, in 2014 in Asia, in Kuala Lumpur, uh, in Malaysia, and the second one in the same year uh, was in uh, Africa, in Morocco, uh, in Rabat. All events occurring in the area of radiotherapy and interventional radiology or in our day-to-day -day practices have shown us the importance to embed radiation protection practices in addition to good medical practices or continuous improvement within a common and sustainable culture. In order, for example, to reduce radiation exposure for follow-up exams, to participate in national or international dose registers and error reporting databases, to use alternative non-noising radiation uh, imaging, especially uh, for children, to accreditate uh, of all e medical equipment and to perform uh, clinical audits from internal or external sources. That's why this guidance was launched to promote safe and appropriate use of radiation in a joint 2021 guidance for healthcare providers. It is addressed to organizations, health professionals, and all stakeholders involved in healthcare application of radiation, including patients, uh, members of staff, and the public in general. There are cultural, social, and economic factors that influence safety culture in different parts of the world. This document has been built upon the output from six international workshops, making available the expertise and experience from stakeholders from different regions of the world. The first workshop was in Argentina on stakeholder engagement. The second one in Switzerland on key elements in each area. The third uh, in South Africa on pediatric imaging, the fourth in Qatar on the challenges from advanced technologies, the fifth in Malaysia on the integration of radiation safety culture into the broader concept of patient safety, the sixth, uh, the last one in US on dialogue about guidance and tools. We divided this guidance into eight chapters from lesson learned in other areas to recommendation and let me introduce now to you in few words uh, those chapters. In a preamble, I would like to mention that the term radiation safety culture, rather than radiation protection culture, is used in this document as safety goes beyond protection, including other aspects of safe radiation use. 
In the chapter one, we define and explain our understanding concerning the radiation safety culture definition. But first, patient safety. Patient safety is considered to be indistinguishable from the delivery of quality health care. So radiation safety culture is intimately connected to the quality of patient's care. On this picture, you have the different keywords directly connected to the quality. Safety, of course, but also people centeredness timeliness, equity, integration, efficiency, and also effectiveness. The radiation safety culture of any organization is defined by the attitudes, behaviors, and action of its stakeholders towards radiation safety. If you want to build a strong radiation safety culture, you need to develop this into an organization which takes account uh, into account of radiation protection on safety, but also best practices and human factors. So you need to have an organizational structure which institutionalizes how people interact with each other, how communication flows, and how relationships are defined. Human mistakes rarely result from neglect, but instead from failures in the system, processes, and procedures that they work with. In chapter two, we summarize lessons learned from safety culture in other areas with three key messages. In aviation, empower anyone with a safety concern or perceived safety concern is essential to raise awareness and resolve the issue before commencing activities. In nuclear industry, leadership, management, and personal accountability are key players in enhancing radiation safety culture and chooses this as a priority. And in global healthcare, there are a wide range of errors and near misses in medicine, many of which go unreported. This is embedded in a complex mix of behaviors and interaction influencing the operating environment. Healthcare is the only radiation using sectors in which a tangible benefit is obtained from plain direct irradiation of human beings. The patient and their diagnosis and treatment will take priority over radiation protection consideration. In chapter three, we explain that radiation safety culture needs to encompass all those who could affect the exposure of the patient. There is a considerable scope to improve the culture associated with the protection of healthcare staff from radiation exposure. A poor safety culture may lead to unintended exposures. Just an example, increasing complexity of interventional radiology is accompanied by a rising potential for significant doses to the staff involved. On these pictures, we mention the different stakeholders. We can say there are three key uh, stakeholder groups. First, all the different professional groups who either work with radiation in healthcare. Second, group comprises outside bodies and includes regulators, international bodies, and national professional bodies. The last group is a group of patients, carriers, and comforters, as well as volunteers and roles in research programs and patient advocacy groups. So the key message is there are diverse groups of stakeholders contributing to radiation safety culture. So engagement strategy must be tailored to the specific target groups. Due to the fact that there are commonalities and singularities between the three stakeholder groups, radiation professionals, outside bodies, patients and publics, it is important to develop a re relationship. There needs to be consistent and coordinated understanding of radiation safety culture among the many stakeholders within healthcare, which acknowledges the varying perception. On this slide, you have a world cloud showing relative importance of key issues in radiation safety culture across all stakeholders. This was discussed during the workshop in Asia. And you can see that the recurring key issue in establishing and maintaining radiation safety culture are communication, education, and training. Each regional workshop generated a SWOT analysis showing strengths, weaknesses, threats, and opportunities for that region. From this, it can be seen that there are common strengths and opportunities relating to national and international leadership and engagement, but lack of resources was seen as a common weakness, 
through to varying degrees and in different ways, financial or need of staff. Threats were identified differently across the regions and typically included issues related to politics, um, local culture, including hierarchy issues, and lack of follow through in initiatives. Chapter 4 explains what is an organizational management with four levels. First, international radiation safety framework with international guidelines which provide the overarching radiation safety culture structure. Second, national leadership responsibility. Organizational management varies considerably between countries. It will influence how culture is based down in terms of what the expectations are from the perspective of local practitioners, hospitals, and private healthcare centers. A good leadership is a fundamental factor in determining safety culture. The third level is local healthcare institution. An organizational management of radiation safety is determinant for development of a good culture through the driver will likely include management structure, local resources use, training, part of the education system, and an integral part of daily practices, quality initiative, and finally, the last level, patients, families, and communities. Engaging and empowering patients and family through patient advocacy groups, involvement in local safety committees, or feedback opportunities could influence management at organizational level and support the journey to safer healthcare. In Chapter 5, we provide different tools for establishing and maintaining radiation safety culture in healthcare, such as to implement international standards and national regulation, to have an education and training program, to perform audit, to communicate on radiation safety. This is essential to ensure education and awareness, particularly of the public. To have a reporting and learning system, a tool for improving quality and safety. To prepare a checklist, this is an effective tool in error management. To have a verification and review system, the practices a feature, fragile briefing, one minute wait, secure communication, cross-checking, self-checking and debriefing. Uh, this is an application uh, in order to well detect errors at different points along the patient pathway and confirm that all data are correct. In Chapter 6, we explain how to assess radiation safety culture. It is possible through a combination of optimal tools. Those tools are required not only to measure the identified criteria of success, but also to stimulate judgments and observation about positive or negative trends. On this slide, you have a figure in one part, example of indicators. On the other part, the directly the related safety, safety culture traits. Just an example, reported errors or incident. This is an indicator and these indicators are related to problem identification and resolution traits or environment for resin concern. A number of specific examples are provided in Chapter 7. Example of good practices of radiation safety. Either radiation safety culture has been improved or where poor culture has been analyzed to determine an appropriate way forward. Those examples are taken from a range of geographical location and also a range of modalities and institutions. In the last chapter, Chapter 8, we summarize the key points on how to build a strong radiation safety culture. Safety is not just a sum of rules, policies, procedures, and processes. The real building blocks of safety are trust, communication, and culture. Advancing a culture of continuous improvement is the only way to stay on the top and to deliver the quality health care that we all aspire. This incredible journey to establish a document on radiation safety culture in healthcare was not possible without a strong team. Our team is composed by Maria Perez from WHO, Debbie Gillet from IAEA, Madan Rennie from IOMP, and Claire Louis Chappell and I from IRPA. Thank you for your attention.